How's it going, everybody? It is I, Visual. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day, and welcome back to, you know, the Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon Wi-Fi Battle versus J. Vo over here in the OU tier. So, just gonna lead off with my Heatran, which is Focus Sash. We got Magma Storm on there, the beautiful move that always hits, and Stealth Rock. So, just gonna get my Stealth Rocks right up as he just leads off a Ghost Core. Probably just wants to get the Top Score buff and uh, expect me to switch out, most likely, because Heatran likes to switch out on a Ghost Score or any ground type in general. But nope, I'm faster, which is nice. I didn't actually expect that. Usually, Ghost Core do like to run enough speed to outspeed Heatran, and sometimes even Adam and Zygarde. So. Uh, he's definitely a bulky close score, judging from that, and uh, he definitely got scared out, I guess, by my Focus Sash Heatran. Maybe you thought it had uh, Hidden Power Ice. So you brought in Tarantar, and fortunately I missed the Magma Storm Tarantar. That would have been a nice little chip, as this Earth Power just bounced off this uh, Mega Tarantar. MF Doom over here, just literally taking that Earth Power. I mean, to be expected since it's a Mega Tarantar, and it's in sand, and it's a rock type, so Power Up punches me, which is an interesting move. I don't see that too much of Mega Tarantar, but okay. So, uh, I go into Mammal Swine and I just Earthquake him, and down goes the Tarantar. So, he doesn't have a too good switch into Mammal Swine. Mammal Swine is one of those Pokemon that can kind of beat every other Pokemon, like Necrozma, Zero Aura. They have just an amazing move pull. It's hard to switch in, basically. It's a Pokemon that has a lot of good coverage and just nice attack or special attack. And also, this is Life Orb Naughty Nature, Mammal Swine as well, with Freeze Dry. It's pretty nice for, I guess, hitting Pelipper. Even Gastron, even though Gastron likes to run max special defense in the OU tier, and you'd rather just Earthquake it, to be honest. But anyways, I brought in Zapdos, it's offensive Zapdos, into his uh, Scizor, which is actually cool because you're using a regular Scizor. It's probably just banded. And uh, this is the offensive Zapdos with the Giga Havoc. I just decided to go for it right on the Heatran as Heatran's leftovers. And I'm kind of hoping this is not going to be a Spadef Heatran, as that's why I just go for it. And plus, it's nice damage on the Heatran as well, just putting it in range of whatever. Saber Sword from Kartana, maybe an Aqua Jet from Azumarill, Wild Charge from Tapu Koko, just Heatran in general, just weakening it is nice. So he got his rocks up, which is a little bit annoying because Zapdos doesn't have any form of recovery because then I'm just going to be having a limited switch ins with Zapdos because uh, Stealth Rocks will just little down each time. So I just decided to just go for the Thunderbolt and he is max special defense because he took that Z move like a champ and that Thunderbolt like a champ. He unfortunately burns me right there with that Lava Plume. And he has Protect, so that's a, just an annoying Heatran. Usual Spadef Heatran, to be honest. And uh, yeah, we have Hidden Heat Wave with Hidden Power Ice on the Zapdos. Pretty nice coverage moves. Heat Wave for Ferrothorns, Azor, HP Ice for Zygarde, Landris, you know the drill. It just kind of hits everything in the U tier. Nice coverage. So, in comes my Azumarill, as he actually has Roar, which I did not expect. I went for Hidden Power Ice, just expecting him to maybe switch out, and then into Glow Score on the Thunderbolt, but. Then I Thunderbolted him again, expecting him to stay in, predicting it hit him Power Ice, so... Uh, then he roared me, which is interesting. Uh, that allows my Zapdos to be a Sack Fodder for later. And I decided to just go for Aqua John and Heatran, and now I go for Knock Off, expecting him to switch out into Gastron, because Gastron is immune to water. Expecting to knock off leftovers from Gastron, but no leftovers, it's Z-Move. So I was like, okay, what Z-Move is this? And then he goes for it, as unfortunately he lives on a Sliver from Play Rough, and it's Poisoning Z. And when I first saw that, I was like, <gasps> I'll lose my Azumarill. It's gonna go for a poison move and knock me out, but no, it's just the toxic. And I was like, what? The hoo ha and the yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's interesting. You raise your defense, so that's cool, I guess. Uh, down you go to, get to my next knockoff. Uh, pretty cool, at least. Uh, I get to keep my Azumarill, and I didn't lose it to, I don't know, Clear Smog, Gastrodon? I, I, I don't know what others. Maybe Sludge Bomb? Does Gastrodon even learn Sludge Bomb? Uh, nobody even runs that. But I think people have ran Clear Smog before. Like, weirdly enough. But anyways, then came the Sizzler. I don't want to take a bullet punch, so I went to Zapdos as a Sack Fodder. And that's why it's pretty nice that he roared my Zapdos out. I didn't know. He should have just Lava Plumed me, to be honest. So then comes Kartana. I just expected him to switch out, fearing the Sacred Sword. So that's why I went for Leaf Blade. But he just stayed in to bullet punch me. So I was like, oh, well, okay. Then I'm just going to go into my Zoom roll. As I actually want to keep Kartana to win the game. Versus the rest of the team, it looks really nice if I can get a Beast Boost. But he actually switched out into Gliscor, and I look like a god just like predicting that, but actually I did not predict that. <laughs> I just decided to sack a Zoom Mill because, I don't know, it just didn't feel like uh, I needed it. It seemed to me the most expendable member on my team at the moment. So that's pretty nice, and also I was kind of hoping for a Paralyze from the, Zoom the Scizor as well. So, Gliscor got that Protect, he got that Earthquake, that's all annoying. Uh, and then luckily I live on a sliver of HP and I get that nice liquidation off, but unfortunately... This Gliscor lives, and man, that is one bulky Gliscor. And, um, yeah, I died to the poison, so that Toxic actually uh, helped him out a lot. 
because he has a lot of protect mons on his team, which is nice. I mean, I like his team. It reminds me of my draft league for the PGBL Season 3. Close score, Heatran, pretty nice. So anyways, I brought a Cartana. I go for the knockoff, mainly because it hits the Scizor. I don't want to go for Leaf Blade and then having Scizor come back in. So that's why I wanted to go for the knockoff, and I was kind of hoping that knockoff can, like, maybe two-shot the Glow Score. But no PS counter, and I'm like, oh, well then. <laughs> I definitely did not expect that from a Glow Score. That's pretty interesting, and it actually worked out for him. So, even though he could have maybe just, like, had Roost and just Roosted off that knockoff damage. So I thought I would actually lose this game, but um, he just knocked out Carton, and now I get to bring my banded Tapakoko with the Brave Bird. And uh, looking at the rest of his team, he does not appreciate it. Banded Brave Bird from Top of Coco. You think Glow Score is going to live it? Not today. He should have clicked Roost on my Cortana, to be honest. If he had it, at least. Maybe he doesn't. Because he has to, um, Earthquake. He has, I guess, Counter, <laughs> which is interesting. Protect. I don't know if he saw the other move. Maybe. I forget. But in comes the Scizor. Luckily, he got paralyzed because Bullet Punch, I think it's a roll to knock me out from the range I was at, and I would get knocked out by Recoil, I think, for sure. So, for you, that's a weight off my shoulders right there. So, in comes the Heatran. He goes Protect. That's fine because I'm just going to keep spamming Brave Bird as I'm pretty sure Brave Bird from the range Heatran is at should knock it out. I mean, you know, Top Coke has really good attack and uh, spam pretty much. So, that's my reasoning behind it. So, that's why I did that. He just stayed in on the E-Train. And also, I don't want to give him more leftovers recovery. So his last Mon comes out, which is Alkazam. And actually, I thought this would be Focus Ash, because I think he brought that before last uh, one of our battles, because we battled a few times. But uh, this time, it's not Focus Ash, so that's pretty nice for me. I think he told me he was a Life Orb, so dope, dope, dope. So pretty nice. Top Coco Brave Burning through his team. And yeah, that's kind of scary game, to be honest. I thought I would lose it, but if you had like maybe the standard uh, Gastron set, he might have pulled through, even though Toxic really helped him out a lot. And not having an item as well, because uh, I think if he had an item knockoff, would have put him in range from a play rough, for sure. But since he had Z-Move, I didn't get to have that nice knockoff boost. So next up, we got is versus Bailey. Man, we got a bunch of, like, high attack Pokemon on Bailey's team. Look at that. Staraptor, Scizor, Gas Gyarados, Tyranitar, Exodrill, Garchomp. They all have, like, over 100 base attack. It's actually kind of threatening. I like it a lot, though. Uh... I would kind of use that team, to be honest. I always like using just a bunch of physical attackers. I think physical attackers, you just slap them on every single team. They're much better than special attackers. But at the same time, special attackers do have their perks. So, anyways, I go lead off with Heatran, as Heatran's my usually dedicated lead, I would say, because it's his Focus Sash. And sometimes you could lead off with another Mon, like maybe Top of Coco. Top of Coco is a pretty decent lead you turn on stuff. But I like to get my rocks up as he actually leads off a star after has intimidate and close combat to me. I'm like, oh, okay, then, well, maybe you're locked into that. Maybe uh, you're a choice scarf. So I go on a top Coco, expecting another close combat. But no, this man clicks return, and I'm like, hey, stop that. Why are you predicting me like that, meanie? So I go for U-turn as, unfortunately, he stayed, and I'm like, hey, you need to stop this right now. I could have used an electric move on you. What are you, folks, Ash Top Star after? What is this? So he went for you, sir, for my top of Coco as I brought in Heatran. I was like, well, okay, then Bailey, I see you. You just, I guess, predicting me. Okay, right, then. Kudos to you. Clap, clap, clap. So anyways, uh, uh, at least I would think. So anyways, in comes Gyarados as uh, I just want to get some little bit of chip damage on it because I'm kind of scared of switching into a Gyarados because looking at my team, I don't have a too good switch. I mean, I could maybe switch into a Zoomer, but what if this is like fly named Z Gyarados? I don't want to play around with it. Because he could have potential like Z move, I mean, uh, Mega Scizor or Mega Tyranitar. So I'm thinking this is a Z move, uh, Gyarados. So that's why I wanted to just Magma Torment. So he does have the Moxie right there, gets another attack raise, but I do just bring in Choice Scarf Cartana, which outspeeds plus one speed Gyarados, and I get to revenge kill the uh, Gyarados. And Cartana looks like a very nice Pokemon versus Bailey's team. We just click Leaf's Blade, Sager Sword, it's just a very nice time. Unless it's gonna be Max Defense Scizor, which is always a really good switch into Cartana. Like, Choice Scarf Cartana for sure. That's why a lot of people don't like to run Choice Scarf Cartana a lot of times because uh, max defense is always a problem. But then at the same time, uh, Magnezone can trap that sometimes at least until you run into a U-turn Scizor. But anyways, uh, I go into my Zapdos as he is going to be Life Orb Scizor. So pretty cool, pretty cool super power. Uh, so everybody just likes to run their regular Scizors. I don't expect that, but pretty cool. I don't see that too much in the OU ladder. So this is Wi-Fi battles and people like to run different things, I would say. So I go for Thunderbolt as in came the Staraptor, I guess as a sack. 
And now in comes the Tyranitar. As uh, Tyranitar should be able to take anything Zapdos wants to go for. Maybe he thinks I'm going to be a bulky Zapdos, but either way, I'm going to switch out into my Kartana, as I expect him to just go for a rock move, as he does just go for the Stone Edge, and unfortunately misses right there. Wouldn't have done too much either way, because Kartana resists that and, uh, you know, has really decent defense. So, just going to go for a Sacred Sword, as in comes the Scizor, to it KOs it, so that is beautiful for me. I told you, Kartana just goes in on this team, like, just clicks Leaf Blade, Sacred Sword, even Smart Strike, if I wanted to. So, getting rid of Scizor is really nice for me, as that gives me a step closer to just clicking Leaf Blade. So, Extra Drill, I'm kind of scared of it if it is going to be like Z move, Groundium Z. So, I switch in to my Zapdos as he just goes for an Earthquake. So, that's pretty nice. And now I switch out my Zapdos into Top Coco, mainly because I wanted the Electric Terrain up, I remember, because I wanted to just go for the Gigavolt Havoc with the Electric Terrain up on the Tyranitar and hopefully knock it out. Maybe. Even with Sand up. But uh, at the same time, Sand is going to stay for a while, and I actually kind of underestimated Extra Drill over here because Rock Slide gets to knock out Zapdos, and I thought Zapdos would be bulky enough to take the Extra Drill's Rock Slide and knock it out with Wave, so... Unfort. And uh, still don't see an item on Extra Drill, so I'm really kind of scared of Z-Move, but luckily he doesn't maybe click Z-Move, maybe he didn't have it, as he just clicks Earthquake right on my Z-Move, and I get to knock him out with the Liquidation, so... Very nice for me. So I'm kind of wondering why the Z-Mover is. Maybe it is extra real, but you just didn't think that uh, my Azumarill would live. Because I'm running max HP as Azumarill. Maybe you thought I would be like no HP Azumarill. But anyways, Tarantor came out. I didn't just wanted to click uh, Liquidation on it because maybe uh, it goes for, I don't know, a Dragon Dance or something like that. Even though I'm pretty sure it's like Bandit or Scarf looking at it. But at the same time, you never really know. Because I ran into a Dragon Dance Rock Game Z Tarantor before. And uh, it was scary. So... I just go into Kartana, and plus Kartana was uh, also a nice uh, revenge killer, just getting that beast boost, and that's really what I wanted. Because maybe I can knock out Garchomp at plus one, but nope, this turns out to be the Mega, so that makes sense, because Garchomp being Mega on the Sand team, I want to get that Sand Force, and I've ran that before as well, but it's not really the best build one, because he loses speed, so. Unfortunately, Garchomp lives that plus one Leaf Blade, and then knocks me out of that Quake, and I'm like, oh, okay, you get a crit, so that's probably why. I think I would have lived that Earthquake without the crit. So, now I just bring in my Mammoth Swine, and just uh, go for the Ice Shard as my best play, because what if I kind of get critted again <laughs> by the Garchomp Mega? So, that's going to be a GG versus Bailey. Pretty fun team, and a uh, pretty fun battle. So, next up, you guys versus Demzer. And looking at Dungeon's team, we got Rain. Okay, Stealth Rock Ferrothorn, maybe a Solvest Magirna, maybe Defense Tornadoes, maybe Rocks on the Swamper, maybe Ash Greninja, and then the standard Defense Belper, maybe maybe a Scarf or Specs Belper, who knows? Maybe it definitely has U Turn. It probably has like Hurricane or Scald, or sometimes Defog. Uh, but Tornadoes is usually the Defogger when you ever you see it. Could be Offensive Tornadoes as well. Could be Zemo Tornadoes, could be Zemo Magirna, I don't know, we'll see. Anyways, I'll lead off with my Heatran as he leads off with the Pelipper. And I get my rocks up as usual. You already know, three times in a row, Heatran does it big, does it nice, get those rocks up, and uh, pretty much lose everything. Unless you run into something that hits you multiple times, like a Water Shuriken that, I don't know, can even knock my Heatran out five times in a row. Maybe. But anyways, uh, yeah, going to Zapdos as a U-turn, I kind of expected him to want to do that, to be honest. Kind of wanted to get a static, but unfortunately that's not the case. So, in comes Magir and I decided to just go for the Electrium Z because if this was offensive, I really just want to weaken it um, to the point where maybe an Aqua Jet from Azumarill can knock it out. And I don't have a 2 good switch into Magir and I because I don't know what set it is. Like, it could be anything. So that's why I just decided to just attack it. And unfortunately, it is going to be a Soul Vest right there as it takes that Z move like a champ and then hits me with a Flirt Cannon. Luckily though, it loads a special attack, and I kind of expected to want to go for the Volt Switch now because um, maybe he doesn't expect the Amazon to come in because maybe he might click Iron Head or something. But even though Iron Head on Zapdos, like, what realist you, would you click on the Zapdos? And I guess the Volt Switch was the play because I could take an Ice Beam, I could take you know a, f a Flare Cannon again because he lowered his special attack. So that's why I wanted to bring a Mammoth Swine and get a nice clean Earthquake off as he brought in Ferrothorn, and that is a nice two hit KO because Naughty. Uh, Life Orb Mammoth Swine does not play around. That is plus attack for you, baby. It's basically an advent Mammoth Swine, but with a little bit of special attack EVs for uh, Freeze Dry doing a little bit more chip. And I was kind of hoping he would bring in Pelipper just so I could Freeze Dry it and hopefully knock it out. But unfortunately, he brought in Greninja, and that makes sense because he probably wants to get the Ash Greninja. As now, I just go into my switch in, which is a Zoomerill. Kind of risky because it might have Gunk Shot. Sometimes Ash Greninja do like to run Gunk Shot, but most of the time, they might not run. They like to run maybe like U Turn Spikes, Ice Cream. 
Ice Beam, I would see more common or spikes. So that's why Sulphus is Azumarill's a nice switch. In. So it's going to go for Liquidation as in comes from Magirna. He has no good switch to the Azumarill, especially in Rain. Um, most of his Pokemon do not appreciate Play Rough. Or all of them don't appreciate Play Rough or Liquidation. So he brought in Tornadus. I kind of can just stay in on this because I'm a Soul Fest. He would have to like go for Zima Vow. I, I don't even know if Zima could knock out Azumarill, to be honest. So uh, he just U-turns and goes into Pelipper, I guess. Um, he realized that uh, I didn't really need to switch out. Maybe he didn't think I was a soul vest bot. I definitely am. He could have probably guessed from the damage from Greninja as well. Maybe he thought that I would get scared out by Tornadus as well. So, um, he, re he gets a nice roost off with the Pelipper as I just keep spamming Play Rough. Mainly because I want to stay in because I want to um, just, I guess, waste rain turns. And actually, I put him in range for Aqua Jet, so that's what I'm going to do. Take the opportunity to knock out Pelipper with the Aqua Jet. So, pretty nice for me. In comes the Swamper. I'm going to go down to an Earthquake, and I kind of want to keep a Zoom roll for the Greninja, so that's why I go into Zapdos, as I kind of expect him to want to click Earthquake over here as well, because you wouldn't click a Water move or an Ice move or a Fighting move on Zoom roll, so yeah, that's why Zapdos came in. And now I expect him to probably want to click Ice Punch, so now I go into Heatran as I want to waste more Rain turns, because his Pelipper is gone, and when Rain goes away, my life is easier, because then I don't have to play around Swift Swim and strong Water moves from Greninja. So I decided to sack Heatran as Heatran would probably be my most expendable member because it doesn't really beat anything on his team. Tornadus and Greninja outspeed it, so yeah. I brought in Kartana as Kartana should live a hit from Mega Swampert and maybe even outspeed it if it's adamant. I'm pretty sure I even outspeed Jolly. I don't know, I forget. It's like by one point. Uh, but either way, I get a nice crit on the Tornadus. That really matters a lot because Tornadus is usually switching to Kartana. Uh, unless I go for Smart Strikes, and unless he's like Rock Helmet max defense, and he can... If he was Rock Helmet, he would put me in range of a Water Shuriken, but luckily he wasn't Rock Helmet. That's what I was really scared of, is Rock Helmet, because uh, Water Shuriken could have a chance to uh, knock me out if he got like 5 hits or something, I'm think. And if I hit to uh, Rock Helmet, chip damage. But luckily that is not the case, and that unfortunate crit just sped up the game, because what would have happened was I would just keep switching out Cortana and just like maybe make some predictions as well. Um, but I still have like some hard hitters in the back, uh, so I don't know. It could have maybe gone to Denzer as well, because maybe if I misplayed. But my Mimble Swine was a really big threat on this for him. He had like no switching for it, and uh, yeah, that's gonna be a GG versus Denzer. So last game we got is versus Joey Fontaine, and he got the swoop out. Oh, whenever I see them on, I just know I'm gonna lose. He already, he got the shenanigans. That's what it means. And yeah, he probably has Mega Maw Wild, Tapu Koko, Landris T, the standard Landris T on Joey Fontaine's team, and then the Zygarde. Good old team right there. I like it a lot because it's very, very good. So, lead off of Utran. He leads off of Tapu Koko. And it's going to be timid Tapu Koko as he just goes for the Volt Switch, and that does a ton of damage because I was like, damn, is that Choice Specs? But it's maybe not Choice Specs. You'll see. At first, I thought I was like, damn, is that Choice Specs? That did a lot of damage. But I'm just offensive trance, so I get my rocks up as he goes into Landris. Obviously, I should be scared out by Landris, but no, I stay in and go for the Magma Storm because I'm a man and I kind of expect to just click rocks, to be honest. And plus, getting off damage on Landris and maybe potentially knocking out with another Magma Storm is ideal. So he's trapped, he can't switch out, and now I just need to hit another Magma Storm and knock him out, but nope. I miss it, and down goes my Heatran. So, flips table. I am done with Pokemon. I'm never using Heatran Magma Storm ever again. Man, why don't I just use Fire Spin? But anyways, I go into Zapdos, and now Zapdos does have the Hinder Power Ice. Maybe you would think I'm a defensive Zapdos, and then he maybe has Explosion and wants to go for that, but he's probably a defensive Zap uh, Landris, and maybe he doesn't have that. But either way, I get to knock him out, so that's pretty nice. So now he knows I have Hinder Power Ice, so he might be wary of that with a Zygarde. Um, but anyways, in comes the Superior, and um, Superior gets that nice light screen off as I go for Heat Wave. I'm like, <gasps> oh no, not some cheese screens. What am I going to do against that? I can't defog with my Zap Dose because I don't have it. I have defog on Tapu Koko. So he gets the screens up. I go for Agility mainly because I want to outspeed everything on his team. I can actually just freely set up on the Superior as well. I don't really um, need to, I guess, weaken it because I'm kind of expecting it to just be like a non- Attacking Superior. I mean, I've ran that before. He could be Leaf Storm, Hidden Power Fire with dual screens, maybe, but I ran Knockoff U-Turn on my screens, Superiors. Maybe he's running that. 
But anyways, I hit Empower Iced as I expected Zygarde to want to come in. So, pretty nice play, but unfortunately I activated his weakness buzzer. And, uh, yeah, he lives the next hit of Power Ice because of that light screen and then knocks me out with that thousand arrows. So, that's kind of bad for me. But I, at least I get to bring in my choice card, Kirtana. It is going to be able to outspeed Zygarde easily because, you know, Zygarde didn't get any speed boost. It only got an attack boost by two. He gives me with that extreme speed, a little bit of chip, and I get to knock him out through the reflect with the leaf blade because Kartana is strong. Sin comes broken. I mean, maybe it's broken. I don't know. <laughs> it's really damn strong, that's for sure. Mega Maw, wow. Where's the switching? Show me one. I don't see one. So, bring in Mammoth Swine as I'm kind of hoping that he would uh, maybe just click Fire Fang, to be honest. And he actually does click Fire Fang, but maybe I should have just sacked the Kartana because actually. I put myself in range of a Sucker Punch, and Mammoth One kind of maybe would have gotten a kill right there, even through Reflect. Like, Earthquake would do a lot of damage, so maybe I misplayed right there. As a Choice Curve Cortana with screens up, that doesn't really do much versus him. Like, yeah, Al speeds a lot on the team, and I'm kind of expecting that to be like Choice Specs Top Coco, but man, my Beta Top Coco Wild Charge doesn't even KO the Mega Mom while through Reflect, so that kind of sucks. I mean, to be expected. So, I go down to play rough. Now I bring in my Soul Vest Azumarill, kind of hoping that I'm faster, but no PS Thunder Punch, and down I go. So he has Play Rough, Thunder Punch, Sucker Punch, and Fire Fang. That's an annoying set. But hey, it worked out for him. I mean, I would maybe use that. So, uh, brought in to my Choice Scarf Kartana, go for the Smart Strike, knock him out, and pretty much my play was to hope that my Kartana can just clean up the game with a plus one attack and just keep Beast, uh, beast Boosting on the rest of his team. But it is a roll to knock out Nightmare over here, which is the Swoobat that gets plus two defense and I'm at plus one attack and pretty much it's like I'm at minus one attack and unfortunately I have to hit an 18.8% chance to knock out Swoobat and I don't get it. But it was really close, not gonna lie. Like if I got that 18% chance to knock out Swoobat, I probably would have just won right there because Dapakoko would have been outsped unless he's Choice Scarf and has like Kinder Power Fire and that would suck. And uh, it would knock out, what else did he have? Superior? Yeah, it would knock out Superior unless, yeah, Superior wouldn't live. A plus two or plus three Smart Strike. So, dang it, man, that Swoobat, simple nature. Urgh, flip that, but why can't you just be getting one defense so that I can knock you out instead of plus two? Oh well, GG to Joey. That was a fun game. And yeah, it's gonna be it for the Wi-Fi battle. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and do your thing. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be it. So, common question of the day is, if you join my giveaway, which one would you get? Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Pokemon Let's Go Eevee? Or if you didn't join it, I mean, which one would you want to get? I think I want to get Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, mainly because I think Pikachu might be better in-game. Because I think Pikachu got a buff, I'm pretty sure, and some cool moves, like a fighting move or something, to help out with the first gen versus Brock. But I don't know. Maybe I'll get Eevee, because everybody wants to get Eevee, so maybe I'll just get Eevee. But at the same time, I really do kind of just want to use Pikachu because it seems to be better. And, I mean, you don't evolve it, so why do I want to keep it Eevee? When objectively, Pikachu would be better. But there's no items or abilities in the game, so I don't even know. But anyways, that's going to be it. So peace, peace, everybody.